Hey everyone, welcome to this weekend's video update for pro members. Today is Friday, May 14th. Hope everybody had a good week of trading in this wild week. Looking at SPX here, obviously big sell-off, and then the last couple days, big bounce, and implied volatility just getting annihilated the last couple days. Our IV percentile is up to around the 70 plus area at one point on, uh, you know, when, when the market was really dropping on Wednesday and it's just been getting slammed back down. So S&Ps, uh, you know, still just barely under all time highs here. If we look at year to date on a percentage basis of kind of where we're at, you know, the s and is still up almost 13% on the year. Now the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ took it on the chin a little bit more. So, uh, you know, the NASDAQ was up near 11% at its peak and it just really fell off a cliff down to a point where it was only up about two and a half percent at one point. Now it's bounced here the last couple of days. So year to date up five, about a five and a half percent. Uh, but the question is, is this over? And I'm not, I'm not so sure. In fact, we, we scaled up a little, little of our uh, short delta positions. We got out of some of our long positions, and so we're we're about one to one on our short delta versus our theta, if we beta weight that to SPY. And so, uh, you know, I'm still I'm still cautiously keeping some short delta in case this thing does roll over again uh, next week. Either way, the volatility is back, and uh, we love volatility. So. Um, so it's, it's been good. Now we did get smoked out of some of our, um, our long plays smoked out of a couple iron ducks and had to take losses on those. But we, you know, we had enough short Delta that our portfolio overall, uh, basically from the beginning of last, uh, beginning the, the end of last week until now, the end of this week is pretty much dead flat. You know, we didn't gain any, we didn't lose any. Uh, so if you can, if you can manage through, you know, craziness like that and still come out unscathed, that is the ball game. And then when things kind of settle down, then you start making it a little bit more consistently and, and, and things kind of get back on track. But you know, that's, that's exactly why we keep short Delta in our portfolio. You never know when this is going to happen. Uh, when we had this little pullback here, we actually positioned, you know, with some of those post earnings plays that we'll talk about here in a minute actually positioned for this thing to rip higher, but always staying cautious with a little bit of short Delta in our portfolio in case this happens. And that really benefited us. So hopefully, hopefully you guys are starting to get a grasp of that. The, the goal is not to, you know, copy exactly every single position that we have. It's to be comfortable with your, with the amount of directional Delta that you have in your portfolio. And the biggest thing is to understand the amount of Delta or directional bias that you have in your portfolio. We like to beta weight it to SPY just to give it kind of an apples to apples comparison. So you're not, you know, when you got all these different types of stocks like Netflix and Nvidia and then the Q's and SMH and XLK and bonds, you know, you want to, you want to try to beta weight that to something to get a, a good picture of kind of what your directional bias is in your portfolio. So hopefully, hopefully you guys made it through this. Okay. I know we, you know, we took some losses on a couple of our long positions, but uh, we had, we had a good balance of shorts in there to offset. So let's go through these. Uh, actually, before we do that, let me just give you a quick recap on the day trading for the week. We had our biggest day trading week ever you know, since we've been tracking going all the way back to August 31st. Uh, back in September of 2020, we had a day of a week of 7,142, and this week, uh, 7,616.25. So new new world record on the day trading front for the week. Uh, also had our biggest day on Wednesday that we've had um, going back that long as well. So uh, nice day trading stuff puts our day trading profits up over 78,000 uh, going back to that uh, point end of August. And then if we look at our uh, summer year to date, uh, over $42,000 year to date. And for, yeah, like I said, this week, uh, just a great week. The other thing I've been tracking is my P and L for day of the week by day of week. Uh, you can see Wednesday is kind of running away with it as far as the most profitable day that I have, as far as my trading, uh, over 13,000, and this is just year to date. So pretty small sample size, but over 13,000 on, on Wednesdays, you can see back to back big days, 4,000 this Wednesday, 3,800 last Wednesday. 
And so just kind of interesting to, to see how that that's playing out. And I'm starting to take a little bit bigger position size in these middle days of the week. Now, Tuesday is kind of lagging. So maybe I've got some kind of hang up on Tuesday or maybe it's just that big, big loss. I took that one Tuesday that uh, had a little bit of a, a mess up. But um, either way, uh, it's good stuff. And we'll continue to do this. We're going to be uh, streaming live every day next week. So hopefully you guys can join us if you haven't before. And we got a good group of core people in there just having fun, making some money, and uh, and uh, we'll continue to do so. So streaming every day next week. If you're interested, check that out in Discord. All right, so let's jump over to our alerts. Starting with the first trade on Monday, which was a closing trade in, in Amazon. We had an iron duck, and that's when Amazon kind of flushed with the rest of the market kind of smoked us out, moved, moved below our exit point, so we had to close that one. Next trade in Baidu, this was a long put uh, diagonal, and this, so this was a, a nice bearish play that um, uh, flushed with the rest of the market to the downside, and we booked a really nice profit on that one. Had taken part of it off, and then we took the rest off here and booked, uh, booked a really nice profit on that one. QQQ, so this was uh, one of our short call verticals in the Qs. Uh, we rolled this out. Uh, actually, we rolled it to the same cycle in June, so stayed in the 39-day cycle. Uh, we didn't want to roll out. To, I think the next one was like 67 days out, so we stayed in the one with 39. Uh, we were well over 50% of max profit, so we just rolled our strikes down and uh, you know booked that credit and continue to keep this on for that short delta exposure. So let's go to the queues real quick. I'll show you what we're doing in there. Actually, I'm going to come back to that because we got we got several positions in the queues. So I'll come back to the queues. Uh, closing trade in SPX. Uh, booked big profit on this SPX trade. Just very little chance of getting back to the duck head. So we just closed it early. Booked that money so we could redeploy it. Uh, SPX Iron Duck. We turned around and reopened a new one. Uh, did this one with 16 days to expiration. So let's go to SPX. I'll show you what we've got in there. Let's get away from our weekly double calendars for now, and I'll show you our iron ducks first. So this is the one with the expiration of May 26th. Whoops, what did I do here? Oh, there we go. So this one's pretty close to where we put it on. Let me scrunch this in a little bit. Price is pretty close to where we put it on. You know, Still got a decent chance if price comes down to get into that duck head. Otherwise, if it rips higher, we'll book that beak profit. We've also got one that we put on as the market was coming down uh, with this one uh, with a uh, May 29 expiration. Price has gone higher, so we're we're up a little bit in the beak with that one. So uh, we'll continue to manage that as we do. And then while we're here, let's just check out these uh, weekly double calendars. So we've got two of them. One of them I put on yesterday uh, with price moving up and implied volatility just absolutely getting crushed. We're, we're down a little bit on this one, but we put on another one today. So if we take a look at that one, pretty close to where we put it on. Actually, price was a little left of center when we put it on, and, and price has continued to move higher. But no P&L yet on that one, so we will continue to manage these. We'll take these off probably next Thursday or Friday. Uh, just And we may put another one on on Monday, depending on how much price moves around. If price kind of stays right here, we'll just keep these on and uh, close those out Thursday and possibly Friday. Uh, otherwise, we will, uh, you know, if we get a big move higher, we'll, we'll add another one on Monday in the same cycle. So that's the plan on SPX. SQ did a closing trade. So this was one of our post earnings short put verticals. So if I go to SQ on the charts, take a look at what we did here. So here was, here was earnings. And price opened up above the expected move, which is notated by this line here. Came right down to it, and and started to bounce. And then and then when the market flushed, this thing just flushed by. And so when it when it broke down below, this is where we closed it out. I didn't want to hold this to take max loss. The market overall was just getting super weak, so we went and closed that out. Took a partial loss on it, uh, and uh, and got out of it because it did not hold. So what I what I look at for these uh, post earnings plays is a First and foremost, a lot of times it just holds above that expected move and then grinds or pushes higher. Uh, if it if it breaks below it, a lot of times the next kind of key support level is is a price level on this previous uh, 
previous price before earnings were announced. So like down here. So when it when it blew through that, I was like, okay, this is uh, this is not going to work this time. So we just cut out of it and took a partial loss. So that's how we that's how we play those. We don't we don't use any specific. You know, if we're down a certain percentage, that's kind of our exit point or, or anything like that. We're really looking at the price action of the of the of the stock and, and in relation to the price before earnings and the price after earnings. Those are the key levels that we're looking at. Uh, Apple rolling adjust, adjusting trade. So this is one of our short delta positions. It's a long put vertical. And so we rolled this out. We were over 50% of max profit on this one. So we rolled it down, rolled it from June to July, and then rolled our strikes down. Uh, went ahead and booked that credit and kept that position on for short delta. So if we take a look at Apple, Apple's getting a bounce the last couple of days. Uh, so it's, it's pushed up a little bit since we put that on. So we're just looking for a little bit more downside again to get back into range on that Apple trade. QQQ. Uh, so this is a um, a long call di this is a long put diagonal that should not say call it should say long put diagonal uh, we booked over 100 percent so we had five contracts we took two of them off and booked like 60 some percent and then we held our remaining three oh no I'm sorry this is our this is our, we had five this was where we closed three of those five and booked over 100 percent on on this piece of the trade and we're still holding two so. Let's go ahead and go to the queues now. So there's an iron duck. Here it is. Okay, so, we, so we've so we got two left. We had five originally. This thing came down. We booked over 100% profit on those. Now price has come back up, but we're still up. Let's see, we've got 182. We've got 100 and some. So we're at about 60% profit on our remaining two. Uh, holding these for some potentially more downside. And if we get that, you know, we'll book obviously a, a lot more profit there. And as I was showing you on the chart with, you know, with NDX, this is QQQ, same thing. Uh, you know, we're getting this bounce today, but I would not doubt at all if this thing rolls over and we crack new, new recent lows here. And so I don't, I'm not sure that we're out of the woods yet. You know, the S&P and the Dow look a lot stronger, but uh, I wouldn't doubt if we see some more downside here. You know, these the prices of these tech companies have just gotten so astronomical as far as valuations that, you know, it's not like it's not like anything's really wrong. I mean, we are we need to get back to a more realistic value. And that's I think that's what we're seeing here. Obviously, there's you know, the CPI numbers came out. Uh, so there's there's some uh, worries about inflation and things like that. And, and that's going to affect tech companies the most. Uh, but I don't, you know, so I, I don't think we're just going to rip and rally back up to new highs in the NASDAQ. Uh, I think we're either going to roll over or potentially kind of chop around for a while. So that's what I'm, that's kind of my assumption. That's what I'm looking for. And so we're going to continue to keep short Delta in our portfolio. And the Q's is one of those. Next trade, closing adjusting trade in Netflix. So this is one of our, another one of our short Delta plays. We booked half of this position, uh, booked almost 60% profit on this piece. This is another long put diagonal. So let's take a look at Netflix. We still have half of that left. We started with two contracts. Now we've got one. Uh, so we've got about $272 in risk left on this. And now that it's bounced, we're up about 40 bucks on this one. So it came down. We booked half of it holding the rest for potentially more downside action. We will see if we get it. But again, you know, Netflix after earnings last time, really weak uh, announcement, uh, even though their subscribers were great. The look forward statements were pretty weak. So this thing just kind of chopped, 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 and then started to break when it bounced up. That's where we got short, came down. Now it's bouncing up a little bit. So we'll see if we get some more downside action. Some of these like I said, some of these tech stocks, I think, that have seen just massive, massive upside, I think they've seen their day in the short term, and we're going to start seeing a little bit more volatility, a little bit more, a uh, little less just exponential growth out of these things. So holding some short delta in Netflix. Uh, opening trade in SPX. So this is where we opened up a duck with 17 days. I already showed you that on the platform. Uh, Facebook closing trade. This was one of our short put verticals that we did after earnings. Uh, that we had to close out for a loss. So let's take a look at Facebook, FB. So this one, 
this now this one was a little frustrating because it pushed up above the expected move, which is right here, and uh, when it and so it came down. And we got in like right here. It pushed way back up. I mean, we were almost at fifty percent of max profit, which is where we were going to book profits. Uh, we didn't quite get there. Waited the next day. It was it was looking for a potential continuation higher, and then obviously the we know what happens in the Nasdaq. We know what happened in the Nasdaq. Just got weak and pulled down everything with it. And so, uh, unfortunately, Facebook went with it as well, and so we had to get out down here. Uh, initially, you know, initially it held above the expected move. Then it initially it held above the pre-earnings price for three days, and it looked like it was going to bounce. And then, but the market just got too weak, so we ended up having to close it down here. Again, didn't take full loss on that one; just took a partial loss. So, uh, you know, when the market just flushes like it did. You know, those the, the ships on that sea are going to come with it. So, unfortunately, had to book a loss on that Facebook trade. And then same thing with Google. Almost the exact same thing. So, uh, got out of that one as well. Uh, closing trade in SPX. This is a weekly double calendar. So, we closed uh, this one. This one with the, with the down move went outside of, our, outside of our range. So, we had to close that one out. Our other one that we were holding had a little bit different uh, price levels. And so, we ended up booking a nice profit on that one. Uh, NVIDIA long put diagonal. So this is another one of our short delta pieces that we had put on. Uh, and this one, we closed half of the position and booked over 65% profit on that piece and then held the other half. So let's take a look at the other half that we still have on. Again, it's bouncing today. We took off a nice, you know, took off half of it when it was down here. Now we we're holding the other half in case this thing flushes down again. And so here's we here's where we're at. Got about 247 of risk on. We're up about 100, so we're up, you know, whatever that is, 40 percent, and looking for some more. Now Nvidia has earnings on 526, so we'll we'll be out of this before then. Uh, so we've got a little bit of time to see if this thing can make some more downside movement and uh, book some more profits. So that's the plan there. VXX. So we haven't done one of these in a while, uh, mostly because volatility has just been contracting, contracting, contracting. But with the spike in vol this week, it looked like a good opportunity to add a short call vertical in VXX, just like we teach in our VIX course. Uh, we we're targeting you know 50% of max profit on this. And so if we take a look at VXX, now we already closed this out today on Friday, just two days later. So what happened is with, uh, you've got this spike in the VIX or spike in VXX. We put on that short call vertical, which is a bearish play. And then, uh, you know, we got this massive contraction in implied volatility on Thursday and this continuation of contraction on Friday, which is what happens a lot of times. I mean, if you look back, um, you know, here's a, here's a longer term chart of VXX. I mean, obviously the coronavirus, that was a, that was a pretty substantial spike, but a lot of times you get these little spikes and then it contracts, spikes, contracts, spikes, contracts, spikes, contracts. So a lot of those, that's what happens a lot of times. And so that's what we were playing here. Uh, you know, this didn't look like any real massive sustained sell-off, um, you know, just based on the correlation and the bonds and a lot of other factors. And so I was pretty comfortable putting on this trade, looking for a, as a short-term spike in volatility and some followed by some contraction. And that's exactly what happened. We booked over 50% of max profit in just two days. So nice trade there. Uh, rut iron duck. So this was uh, price came down. It was near our exit point. It didn't blow through it or anything, but didn't want to hold it overnight and risk another big gap down to take a loss bigger than we were uh, looking for on this. So we ended up just closing this out and taking the loss on that one. Uh, here's the XPX weekly double calendar that we added. I already showed you that on the platform, added this with seven days in the front, 11 in the back. Uh, on the front week, keep in mind, these are the AM options. You could use the PM options as well. Uh, I just like the AM options in this uh, because sometimes when you get close to expiration, there's some opportunity to book even more profits depending on where price and volatility is. And so uh, we, we added that one. And then SPX, uh, this is the other one that we closed. We booked over 50% profit on this one. So had two on, uh, took a loss on one, and booked a nice profit on one. Uh, and then we opened the other one. I, sh I showed you both of these already. 
There's the VIX, uh, VXX closing trade. And then lastly, today we added a long put diagonal in McDonald's. I was looking around at different stocks, different indices. You could have done this in an index, uh, but I, I kind of like doing these directional plays in stocks. Sometimes you get a little bit more bang for the buck. So I was looking for stocks that had had some recent weakness, which wasn't hard to find because almost everything had some recent weakness besides banks. And then has, has bounced, which again, a lot of things have done this, but I uh, wanted to kind of diversify into something that's not tech related and McDonald's fit the bill. So what we did here is let me go to a chart of MCD first. I'll show you what I was looking at. So McDonald's has been you know pretty, pretty darn strong here, especially you know, recently. And finally with this sell-off had pretty massive sell-off, you know, took away about, you know, what is it? Two, three, four weeks worth of gains. And then, uh, the last couple of days is bouncing here. So what I'm looking at is, uh, we put on a bearish play, uh, as, as part of our short Delta in our overall portfolio to see if this thing can roll over, break through those lows and, uh, and give us some, some good profits there. So we did a, we used a, a diagonal, which, and, and the reason I like these is because we can, you know, have a little, little amount of risk. In this case, we did eight contracts, which ends up being $576 in risk. So if this thing rips against us, we are cool with, we don't like taking losses, but we're accepting the risk of, of that loss. So you need to position size these in a way that you might take a full loss. So if we take a $576 loss, it is what it is. Uh, we're willing to risk that for the upside that we get if this thing moves lower. You know, if this thing just moves down to, let's see, the, the downside price level of the bottom here is about 227. So you can see if we move down to about the 227, we're, we're going to be at about almost 100% profit on this trade. And obviously, if it blows through the recent lows, then we're going to be able to book uh, even more. So that's the plan. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of our other positions, starting with ES. So this is a, uh, a long put vertical that we've got on holding for short delta. Uh, looking Now this one has only got about seven days. Uh, yeah, seven days to expiration. And so we're going to be rolling this next week, but I'm hoping uh, you know we get a little bit more downside before we do that into next week. We've still got the short strangle in bonds with the implied volatility contracting today. We're up about $507 on that since we did our last roll. Uh, Apple, another one of our short delta plays. This one's already been rolled out to July. Uh, it's hanging out right near our break even. Uh, we've got this one in DE, John Deere. I thought we were going to get back into range with that sell off, but this, these last couple of days and this bounce uh, kind of pushed it back out. Uh, this is in um, this is in May, so we're going to be rolling this one next week. I do want to keep it in there just because we we need the short delta. I want to keep the short delta. Uh, DIA, same thing. This one expires next week in May, so we'll be rolling this into next week. See if we can get a little bit of downside before we do that. Uh, same with IWM. This is in May, so we've got about four of these that we got to roll next week. Uh, I mentioned McDonald's, Netflix, NVIDIA, Q's. I mentioned Q's. Uh, SMH. So we've got this short strangle that's been adjusted into a straddle. We're actually up a couple thousand dollars on this after all adjustments and rolls. And so uh, if this uh, if this stays fairly centered into early next week, we'll be near that 25% of max profit. Even if we're not, you know, if we're still fairly centered, I'll probably just book this, book those profits. And you know, this has taken up a lot of capital. This is our probably our biggest capital uh, position over $12,000 just because it's it's naked options. Um, so we'll we'll have that capital freed up and and start to add in some more uh, more small positions and. You know, if we can get a, you know, implied volatility is just getting annihilated. But if we can, if we can get a pop back up in implied volatility, we'll have a lot of opportunity to sell some premium, and we'll start doing so. Uh, I mentioned SPX, and then lastly XLK, another one of our short delta positions. This is the long put vertical out in June, so we're we're good there on time. Pretty hanging out pretty close to where we rolled it the last time. So. Those are all the positions. Those are all the alerts. Hope everybody has a fantastic weekend. We will see you here next week. Have a good weekend. Take care.